Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be continuing talking about the famous star known as Betelgeuse that you can see right there in the night skies of our planets. A few more interesting facts just came out about this star and one of them involves gravitational waves. So let's talk about Betelgeuse once again and welcome to What The Math. The incredibly large, beautiful and bright Betelgeuse that you see right there in the middle is technically known as the Arm of Orion in different languages, and Betelgeuse itself stands for the Arm of Orion in Arabic. This star is so extremely large and expanded so much over the years that it can easily be seen with a telescope, and with a powerful enough telescope you'll even be able to see something like this, the actual features will become visible. As mentioned in some of the previous videos, if you were to place this star in the middle of our own solar system, it would sort of look something like this. Covering pretty much most of the terrestrial planets and reaching almost all the way to the orbit of Jupiter with a radius that's about 900 times the radius of our own Sun. So this is a tremendously large, very bright and very powerful star. But the thing is, on January 14 of 2020, something very unusual has been reported by some of the scientists working for LIGO, which is of course this large L-shaped detector that was responsible for detecting gravitational waves when various black holes and neutron stars collided, allowing us to study effects we've never been able to study before. You can actually even see this report yourself on the so-called GRACE database that keeps track of all of the gravitational waves and has a really accurate, uh, up-to-date approach to posting all of the gravitational waves pretty much as soon as they're detected. So here, on January 14 of 2020, these scientists reported detecting unusual gravitational waves coming from the same region where the Orion constellation is located. And because this was only a few weeks after we detected the dimming effects, this obviously raised a lot of interesting questions. Is Betelgeuse actually going supernova? Did it finally explode and are we observing some unusual effects, including the gravitational waves that we think some supernova might produce? And according to the LIGO researchers, this is the unusual burst wave gravitational wave that we don't really have a good explanation for. So technically, it could have been an actual explosion or a supernova. But at this point, we're not even sure if this is a real detection or if it's something related to a disturbance here around Earth that might have created this as well, because LIGO is so sensitive that it can technically detect things that are created by all sorts of mechanical and electrical things on the planet. In other words, for now this uh, report is very preliminary, but a lot of scientists studying Betelgeuse were super excited and some of them even went outside to check if it's still there, because maybe it has gone supernova. And as of today, at least the last time I checked, it's still there. It still hasn't exploded. And one of the astronomers, Andy Howell, has even uh, gone as far as making a small map showing us where Betelgeuse is and where these two detections are in relation to Betelgeuse. In other words, he kind of demonstrated that they weren't really exactly where the Betelgeuse is. They could have come from any other region here and here. But just the fact that we've detected a gravitational wave so soon after we start reporting the dimming effects of Betelgeuse is exceptionally unusual and I guess in some sense a very crazy coincidence. But today I think most scientists would agree that um, it still has probably a few thousand, possibly even hundred thousand years in it before it actually does go supernova. Currently Betelgeuse has existed in this form as a giant for roughly around 80,000 years, but it still has way, way more to go. But furthermore, one of the new models that was recently posted, because Betelgeuse suddenly became a very famous star to talk about again, suggested something else really interesting. It suggested that possibly Betelgeuse has even more than originally thought. In other words, it might not be going supernova anytime soon at all, for a very simple reason. Over the last few years, uh, the scientists studying Betelgeuse discovered that there are two unusual properties that it has. One of them is that it seems to possess a tremendous amount of nitrogen that shouldn't really be here. And the other is that it seems to be spinning way, way faster than it should be spinning. Because it's such a tremendously large star, as stars expand, they should be slowing down their rotation. They should not be spinning very fast. Betelgeuse, however, spins pretty fast possibly as fast as 15 kilometers per second on the surface here. And this presents another unusual problem that we can't explain. But one of the recent studies tried to tackle that. And by using various models, the scientists have been able to explain these unusual properties along with the origin of um, Betelgeuse relatively accurately. So first of all, we know today that 
It was very likely created in the this very dense star region known as Orion OB1A. And it very likely also got kicked out of here and moved all the way to where it is today. We know this because Betelgeuse is actually moving relatively fast across the night skies and it's leaving this particular system. But hypothetically, if Betelgeuse was not one star, but a binary system with two stars orbiting around one another in this fashion here, and one star being about 16 masses of the sun, the other one being about four masses of the sun, once they got kicked out of this original home system, their orbits would actually destabilize a little bit and with time these two stars would slowly start approaching each other and eventually combine into one. In other words, these stars would turn from binary system to a singular large object that would then start mixing its material and also create a lot of spin momentum, which would explain why the modern Betelgeuse is spinning so fast, and also by combining the smaller star with the larger star, some of the nitrogen that was already created here would have actually stirred up, bringing it to the surface, which is why we're seeing so much of it today. In other words, if the Betelgeuse star was a binary system, and was then merged into a single object, it would actually have all of these features that we're observing today. But on top of this, if this is what happened, it's very likely that it still has so much material in it that it shouldn't really be going supernova anytime soon. As a matter of fact, this new discovery or this new analysis suggests that we might have overestimated when Betelgeuse is going to go supernova. The scientists behind this paper now think that it actually is not going supernova for a very, very long time. And this particular idea makes a lot of sense. As a matter of fact, we already know today that some of the unusual peculiar uh, observations we have of stars can usually be explained if the star itself used to be a binary system. Like for example, very recently I've talked about the G objects, and today we know that these unusual G objects that otherwise are very difficult to explain can be very easily explained if two stars are merged to create the object that we're observing. So in a sense, the binary system becoming a singular star can explain many different phenomena we're observing today. And this could of course apply to Betelgeuse as well. But we need a lot of follow-up studies for this to become a fact. For now, it's just an assumption. Although a very sound, very scientifically accurate assumption. Assumption that I personally really, really want to be true. But we'll find out with time if this is correct. And the thing is, if this was a binary system that became a singular star, this could be our best opportunity to study the evolution of such unusual systems. In other words, by studying what's happening with Betelgeuse and trying to understand what effects this has on the actual star system, we might be able to then create a lot of other ideas and a lot of other theories to help us explain other mysteries in the universe, specifically related to, like for example, dimming stars, like the Tabby star, or other unusual phenomena that are currently unexplainable to us. But anyway, that's kind of it for the updates of Betelgeuse. So first of all, we've detected gravitational waves, and secondly, we also think that maybe, just maybe, this used to be two stars, in which case it still has a lot of fuel left before it becomes a supernova. But on that note, that's really it. Once we discover more about Betelgeuse, and once we discover more about binary stars becoming singular stars, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, and most importantly, come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Possibly even support this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.